If you're growing breakneck geographically, program-wise, and the content-wise, you have no challenges there because we can use all the entrepreneurs that we can get. So it's it's not such an issue for someone like Agastya uh, because we've, we have huge opportunities for people to take and run themselves completely. And therefore, it's not such an issue. Okay, there might be an element of competition as to who did better, all of that, and then that, in fact, is somewhat positive. And therefore, working around that is not such a problem. Uh, it could be an issue if uh, multiple intrapreneurial potential candidates are gunning for the same thing. That could be an issue, but uh, fortunately, we have not come across that, and therefore, we are, we are in the clear in that. If you can identify in one word the one standing out characteristic of each, and then make it a slogan for all. So then they are labeled with that. He's Mr. Trainer, he's a Mr. Researcher, or is he's a... So you know that these people excel in one, maybe mediocre in the others, but they are never subordinated to anybody. They are excellent in one, so they are leaders in one characteristic or one strength. So if you can create multiple identities of leaders, and strengths, which are identified not by a boss, but by everybody. Everybody recognizes that. So it's a whole organizational recognition they get, and uh, this percolates down to the whole society where they are working. I think that will uh, also uh, leverage their uh, strengths and uh, can coexist uh, multiple career growths. Uh, let me tell, uh, take this question in different way. Not a. Uh, managing the multiple entrepreneur even the single entrepreneur managing is a uh, is a slightly different ball game uh, because you trust them so you are tender to them but at the same time you are running the organization so you have to be harder also so it's a very very uh, kind of always a, a very mixed uh, balance and and always a very tactful skill that how soft you can be how hard you can be and and uh, and uh, and the really fun is in that when you have to be both. Uh, uh, that's where dealing with the you you because you trust them, you feel about them. In somehow they're part you part of you and you are part of them. So there is lots of attachment value to the whole chemistry. But at the same time, there's a target to achieve. There's a certain task to perform. There's certain accountability to per, uh, uh, kind of uh, demonstrate it. So how you translate all those things is always a, a, a subjective call but how you same time you mix this tender plus hardness like it's like maybe some coconut kind of thing uh, 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 that's a very very uh, critical second thing maintaining entrepreneur is is like you have to be with them several times uh, there's some known unknown mistake happen but you cannot be a boss and say, oh, it's because of you, this, etc., etc. Uh, somehow, uh, we have to together and shield it, even if I haven't done it, but that's fall in my lap. Uh, and, and you then, as uh, for external, you face it. So there is a certain uh, characteristic, uh, how to manage entrepreneur, like we can go in detail after this session, but there are lots of uh, uh, slightly different Characteristic in, in, inside the managing either is a one or multiple uh, uh, traits. Uh, traits are there. And I think second point what he said was, if you are not just manager recognizing it, not just the entrepreneur recognizing it, give support so that peer also recognizing it. Whole organization recognizes it. Otherwise, it becomes a label and title. So you have to give them the opportunity, support, even a kind of a, a experience so that whole organization recognition happens. As Navin said, it's tough. You have to be tr trust them, but at least be accountable for the results. So what I have learned, I think based on the lot of discussion here and earlier is, go involve them in goal setting for themselves, prompt them, nudge them to set the goals which are aggressive, own the goals and then be accountable for it. So you have a set of process to review the goals at periodic time so that you can review the goals and they have to perform the results. How they do it? Leave that freedom to them. And last one, I think is very, very important, what he said is, uh, this is very good philosophy, called Windows philosophy, which Navin taught up, was, and he used to say, whenever there is a recognition coming from outside, when a praise coming from outside, it is, no, they, these are the entrepreneurs. 
whenever there is a problem or failure, the leader used to say, look in the mirror, take the responsibility yourself. So pass the success to the entrepreneurs for the external point of view and take the failure as you as a leader from external facing point of view so that they get shielded and they are ready to take extra responsibility, extra risk to make the organization successful. Definitely if it is a very cost effective, which doesn't involve very high budgets in implementing that, definitely I'll take a call and I'll go ahead and I'll show the results. But if it's very cost, I mean very high budgets are involved in all these things, definitely I need to come, you know, communicate with the top management, take approvals, whatever the things are required, then I need to go ahead. Because like financially, definitely the, I feel like entrepreneurs, we cannot take high risk in the financial aspect. So that's why if it is a low cost budget, any idea, so definitely we are having the freedom to go ahead and implement and you know, we can try to experiment always, try to see the result. Yes, definitely, we are for that. Always we try to experiment. That's how you know you can see the how you know big kitchen it has come up. It's not that we have copied somewhere and replicated and pasted here. It's all completely depending upon our own experience. We have completely built up such a you know uh, gravitational based concept, uh, concept based kitchen here in Hubli, and it's supposed to be the largest kitchen across the world, uh, you know, as of now. Uh, you know, otherwise, if we didn't, have, if our top management has not allowed to think out of box, definitely this would have not come true. So we have another mechanism where we discuss with this top management and we pilot it around and uh, whatever necessary resources needed to that, if it is feasible, we raise it locally, demonstrate that it is, it is going to work, then we try to scale things up and that freedom is uh, given, to, uh, given to us by the senior management. Uh, scaling up can be done maintaining that value system. Like uh, the program which I am running, that Deshpande Fellowship program, we have reached 200 alumni. But that, what we call the DNA has been maintained so far. What we find is that, that local leadership is critical. For example, if we hire some of them who have done like from Premier Management Institute and start uh, hiring and ask them to scale, it might be not be a sustainable uh, solution. That building that value system at the local leadership level is critical to scale it. Let me give you an example of why US it looked at positive. In the US, the entrepreneurship is, is taken by people who actually has a, a kind of a, a pride having my company, a running company. And this taking ability is higher in the society. In India, uh, most of the parents who look at do we have first was do you have a government job? Why? Because it is it remains till the end of your life. Because jobs were not there. So it took only last 15 years that we have a lot of growth in the jobs in IT sector where very intellectual, high intellectual jobs are there where people can actually take the risk and transform the society. So wait for a few more years. I'm sure parents will start saying to their kids, hey, why not become an entrepreneurship instead of taking a job? Okay. But it will take time. The critical mass is required. Once critical mass is there, it will happen. Uh, see, even my parents were not interested in me starting a company. Even at the age of 45, when I started, the 40, I started a company. My mother, father was saying, okay, you've got a good job, good money as a company. You want to stay there in the US today. So I, they thought that because I'm coming to India and I'm going to start a company. So he said, stay in the US, no problem, we are okay with that, but don't start a company. So, so it's, a, it's a mindset, but it will change. So today I'm seeing some of the kids who are starting the company. So I know we have an entrepreneur here who would have faced the problem because he had a multinational job. So I see he is far more uh, risk, courageous guy, I think a bigger risk, and has one of the pioneer members of transforming the society because he had a good multinational job in an area which is in IT, and he decided to go to a startup and make a difference. So I would say he might, he should save something now. My, I was always fascinated about inventing things, creating something new, but convincing them about these was very difficult for me. Because they always thought getting a government job was, was the ultimate thing for somebody. But for me it was about, you know, creating something new which changed people's life was the ultimate thing for me. So it, the transformation from that person to this today has taken a lot of effort personally as well and making them realize that what I do has transformed me as a person as well as the surroundings around me. So today they believe, I mean, uh, today when I showed them, yesterday when I showed them the article that is, I've been called in as a speaker here, my, my father really felt very proud. I mean, he said, yes, uh, what you said was true. 
so i mean uh, that really you know uh, gets them back to that point where they were saying that yeah go to government jobs go to uh, apply jobs elsewhere go to it industries uh, i mean i was a sar performer in my college my uh, i was offered at six different places in uh, various multinational companies but still somehow i felt that i wanted to be a, be a larger part of it in a small though in a small organization i wanted to be a larger part unlike uh, you know a smaller part in a larger organization a uh, sense of security when they do do they do take risk etc but the sense of security is very high like you are taking the risk on someone else money so the sense of security is totally different and and they are more strategical in that way thinking where the entrepreneurship leadership is a sense of insecurity is very high so sometimes i see that they become more tactical than strategist so so it's a di difference different way of looking uh the sense of urgency is very high in uh, entre uh, entrepreneur or leader slash but the sense of urgency in corporate leader i have seen differently so there are uh, there are the clear cut distinctions are there do there is a blur line but uh, but uh, the the two creatures are totally different and and if you have worked with the both of them you can easily identify uh, uh, there is a mckinsey and goldman sachs group of companies kind of people corporate leader where the uh, other vivek and other sort of people who roll the sleeve take the whatever their philosophy value take challenge and then keep persistently work and somehow sometimes star get aligned so you can pay the salary if star doesn't get aligned probably they all go home uh in my career i have come across certain situations when there will be lots of pressure to compromise with the ethics i think as far as we are very clear on what we are doing and as far as as long as the organization stick on to what they want working for the communities that they work for i think there is no need um uh, let me tell you an example um we were trying to collectivize the uh, communities of sex workers injecting producers and sexual minorities at the state level so i don't want to name the department one of the bureaucrats said why do you want to waste the time and the energy there is government to take care why don't you halt the pro uh, program that you are doing and transfer the funds for us so some of this came to the communities itself this information what the bureaucrats said reached the communities itself they actually came together they actually gave us the strength to work to continue the work that we wanted to do so we never compromise still the work is going on entrepreneurs are made only because there is a you know a, a alignment of values i mean i align my values to the organization values so there is a like mindedness between me and me and the entrepreneur so that's when an entrepreneur is made i mean if i have to say entrepreneurs are made when there is a space given for them to think and uh, an area to implement that and also time to prove those ideas so that's when an entrepreneur i mean an entrepreneur is made so i don't feel there is in a conflict of uh, values uh, i mean ever will, will make a person entrepreneur uh, i think values are very important first of all for the personal growth that like we should have some values but uh, most of the time what happens actually defining the value what is the value that really going to take you up and the organizational value absolutely this is not the like one person who is has to decide so in the case actually where i am working with the foundation the spondy foundation so a lot many times actually so only two values actually that i follow and personally i think it is very much uh, matching to the foundation's value that is one thing is like enjoy the work that every time like i keep talking to my colleagues let's enjoy let's enjoy so it looks to my organization to the even audience also even the stakeholder also wow there is a fun and whatever there is a fun really something is coming out good and the second thing is actually respect the people so i think in the sector where we are working actually we are working for the people so very important actually whatever we are doing actually there should be a respect so respect within the team respect to the stakeholder or respect to the family that's what everybody expects and i think so it has never contradicted actually within the work and with the family so as just anup was also sharing like the uh, value system which we have and the organization that is uh, more important so as i was uh, sharing in my earlier uh, this thing also like uh, the value system of the organization is first very important and then um, like the the work atmosphere or where we are working and no doubt there were we we have to do some compromises right now i am not able to recall uh, any of the examples like that 
but um, what i was uh, what i will tell is la yeah there are some examples where we need to compromise on our value system but which was uh, like if it is good for the organization yeah definitely i would do it if it is good for the organization otherwise i won't uh, do it so that is my view no the, the day i compromise i should not have that entrepreneurship label in me that's the uh, observation and uh, as navin suggested is for art for an entrepreneur to work with the uh, entrepreneur also oh that we also have that bi binary trust level there are lot of times there will be a uh, difference of opinion and that's all fine but we need to have that uh, tenderness and uh, that hardness for for as an entrepreneur in my observation also uh, is very is very uh, is very tricky thing to manage that uh, just to add uh, you know uh, on the front of organizational value whatever the organization mission and vision and the values we have there is no compromise on that that's very clear the second is in the team you know for example from personal value as ajay was mentioning enjoying the work and really being you know doing fun doing doing really with a lot of energy and enthusiasm this is the personal value i believe in but when i talk to my team and when i see people in my team we have 100 plus people in the team this value gets little diluted because everybody is not same on that front there is little compromise and how can i bring the other person and how can i bring this value in the other person there is a challenge and then we sit across the table and work out there is a dilution in this value no entrepreneurs in the organization the growth doesn't happen and for social and organization entrepreneurs are key to success i think we locked at four three or four four i would say major points one is foundational or fundamental alignment on vision values philosophy trust second is on communication talked about it uh, sanjeev talked about it open continuous communication transparency and uh, growth where challenges are there for them to grow experiment support is there guidance is there for the uh, team and the company uh, or the organization and last but not least is a freedom freedom to take some risks freedom to take decisions and freedom to take ownership basically that they own it that they actually feel the ownership and they drive success so i would say a big hand and bow to the all the entrepreneurs who have made this success